Sony games are renowned for their stunning graphics and thoughtful storytelling, with PS exclusives long being a major driver of PlayStation console sales. Up until fairly recently, games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, and God of War were only playable exclusively on Sony's consoles. But it seems that Sony crunched the numbers and decided that bringing some of their most beloved titles to PC was a smart financial move. And you know what it means when a game comes out on PC. It means there's a chance it'll run on Mac through crossover. In this video, we'll take a quick look at each of Sony's PC ports and see how they run on Mac. Let's check it out. First off, most of these games will require some serious power to achieve a playable FPS and sticking to 1080p is the best bet for most of them. All of the titles ported by Nixus have been updated with FSR 3.1 and frame generation, which really helps with performance, but you'll still need at least 24 gigabytes of RAM and a pro chip or better to properly run these games. We'll break the video down into four sections. First, games that are fully playable on Mac. Second, games that almost work. Third, games that don't work at all. And finally, I'll put a gameplay montage at the end for your viewing pleasure. Let's start with the Spider-Man games. Marvel's Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales are phenomenal games that push the PlayStation 4 to its limits. Amazingly, both run great on Mac. If you look at the HUD in this gameplay, you'll see the game is using around 10 to 15 gigabytes of RAM. So you'll need a Mac with at least 24 gigabytes to run it properly. I highly recommend enabling FSR 3 and frame generation for the best performance. On an M3 Max MacBook Pro, I'm even able to play with ray tracing when using FSR. Note that you may need to quit and reopen the game after toggling FSR on for it to take effect. Overall, these two games are nearly flawless on Mac, and I have high hopes that Spider-Man 2 will run just as well when it eventually drops for PC in January. Next, let's talk about Returnal. In my opinion, Returnal is one of the best roguelike games made to date. In this footage, Returnal is using around 14 gigabytes of RAM. So while 16 gigabytes might suffice, I'd still recommend 24 or more. FSR 3 is essential for stable FPS, though some areas may still cause occasional frame rate dips. Overall, the game runs great on Mac and is a fantastic experience. Ghost of Tsushima is the latest PlayStation exclusive to make its way to Mac. Initially, launching the game would result in an FC16 error, but thanks to brilliant work by Vladimir Prague, the game can now be patched and is fully playable. The best part? It runs exceptionally well on a whole bunch of Macs. I recommend 16GB of RAM and an M1 Pro chip or above. Check out the video description for a link to the mod file created by Prague, and also make sure to check out their YouTube channel. Horizon Zero Dawn is a special game. Exploring the vast open world and battling enormous robots was a blast on PlayStation, and it's just as fun on Mac. The game uses a lot of RAM, so you'll likely need 24 gigabytes for the best experience. Here's some gameplay running at 1080p on high graphics settings. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart runs on Mac, and it's pretty awesome. With full FSR 3.1 support, adaptive triggers, and some of the cleanest visuals I've ever seen, Ratchet & Clank is my personal favorite game on this list. I've seen the game run pretty decent on an M1 Pro with 16GB of RAM, but for a true console-like experience, I recommend 24GB of RAM on an M2 Pro chip or above. Check out the following gameplay running at 1080p with ray tracing. Impressive. Wait, you can see me? Where are you? You got my starship ready? Sackboy A Big Adventure is another gem, and the gameplay looks stunning on a max display. While there's no FSR or adaptive trigger support, the game runs smoothly on an M1 Pro with just 16GB of RAM. Full multiplayer support is available, and overall the game feels fantastic on Mac. Just look at how gorgeous this underwater level looks with ray tracing on. Yeah. 
Until Dawn is playable on Mac after applying a simple patch to the app. Version 1.05 is out, and it adds all sorts of performance improvements, including FSR 3.1.1 and frame generation. I've tested Until Dawn for about two hours now on my M3 Max, and while it's not perfect, the game is definitely playable. Unfortunately, while FSR 3 and frame generation do greatly increase the FPS, overall the FPS is pretty unstable, and even dropped into the 20s at some points. Until Dawn also uses a ton of RAM. In this footage, Until Dawn is using about 16 gigabytes of RAM, so you'll need some serious power to run it. More performance updates are expected for Until Dawn in the near future, so hopefully this Unreal Engine 5 game will end up running perfectly on Mac, because it has some real potential. Alright, next let's look at the games that kind of sort of work on Mac. They're getting there. God of War probably could have gone in the working section, but the little white fuzzies that plague the character models really holds it back. While this graphical glitch isn't game-breaking, it does detract from the cinematic experience that God of War is known for. The game uses a lot of RAM and runs at around 40 to 50 FPS, but even with these imperfections, it's still a lot of fun to play. Next is Horizon Forbidden West. I still can't believe this game runs at all on Mac. Released in 2023, it boasts next-gen graphics and a hefty file size of 150 gigabytes. It requires a simple AVX fix to launch, and when it's working, it's pretty incredible. Unfortunately, it crashes early in the game, making it unplayable beyond the first 20 minutes. Days Gone is a weird one on Mac. It's one of the oldest games on this list, and for some strange reason, only works correctly when using Crossover 23.7. Something about Crossover 23.7 allows the live rendered cutscenes to properly play. Every other future version of Crossover just doesn't work, and skips the cutscenes completely. I'm not quite sure why this is, but I'll definitely be submitting a report to Codeweavers, and hopefully they can fix it. Days Gone runs pretty darn well, with moderate shader stutter that eventually goes away. This gameplay of Days Gone is running through Crossover 23.7 using Apple Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 Beta 3. So now for the sad part, the games that just won't launch. So first we've got Helldivers 2. Don't even think about playing it on Mac. Like many games with anti-cheat, it will always be unplayable on Mac unless the devs decide to make a Mac port. You won't. Next is The Last of Us. Widely considered one of the best games ever made, it's a real shame the game doesn't launch when trying it with Crossover. Vladimir Prague commented on Reddit that the game requires the Agility SDK to run. I'm not smart enough to know what that means, but hopefully Apple will update the game porting toolkit or Rosetta 2 soon to fix the issue. Next is Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves Collection. Aw oh man, do I wish this worked. The game contains all four of the Uncharted games, all optimized for PC. This would be so much fun to play on Apple Silicon. Unfortunately, the game doesn't launch, and we'll have to wait until Apple fixes the Game Porting Toolkit or Rosetta 2 for it to work. Lastly, we have God of War Ragnarok. One of the biggest PC releases of the year, it's a real shame that it won't run on Mac yet. When attempting to launch, you'll get an AVX2, FC16, and FMA error, and there's also a chance the game requires a PSN login, which would complicate things further. I'm hopeful that a fix will be found, but for now, we'll just have to scream into the void. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Spider-Man 2 is coming out for PC in January, so I'm excited to see if that will work, and I'm sure we'll get more PlayStation games working on Mac in the future. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the gameplay. Where are you taking me? Who are you? You recently began working with someone in an Oscorp lab. 
How do, you, how do you know that? We don't have much time, Isaac. Tell me his name. Everyone think I'm with the resistance. Oh! 